Alrighty. Do we have an echo now? I hope not. No. Um. All right. Who said number one? You said number one, right? So. Yeah, Alexander, you want to walk us through this? Ah uh, yes, <clears throat> yes. So, <clears throat> so uh, this proposal is to extend HTTP request exception uh, contract uh, to provide uh, direct access to status code property. Uh, it is important to it's important for exception uh, handling logic when we want uh, to when uh, people want to analyze uh, HTTP response. Uh, which uh, basically were returned properly but contains non successful status code. Currently, the only way for them is to check a HTTP response uh, message uh, status code, but uh, it's not uh, convenient for everybody. Sometimes people use, for example, ensure, ensure success status code uh, method to throw exception, and if they do that, currently uh, there is no direct access to status code property. The only thing they can do currently is to uh, parse uh, to string HTTP response message to string uh, text, uh, which contains uh, that status code. And uh, this uh, proposal is to explicit is to expose this status code explicitly. The amount of change on the code side, like on the implementation on the implementation side, is uh, quite negligible, because this status code is already passed uh, to HTTP request exception uh, when this ensure success status code method is called, but it's just passed as in form of string. So instead of passing it as a string, we could just uh, pass them as an explicit parameter. And uh, this proposal, uh, in this proposal, it is uh, in, in this. Uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, this, in this issue, it's proposed to add uh, one property to HTTP, uh, to HTTP request exception and two constructors, which would uh, take uh, status code. And the property seems quite reasonable. Yeah. Um, I think it would just be a question of what constructors to add to the exception. I don't really have a strong opinion. I, I think some constructors were part of the proposal. We yes. can scroll down. Scroll, Please down scroll, a scroll down a bit. Who creates HP request exceptions other than us? I'm sure someone's mm. reusing it out there. I guess I wonder, <laughs> do, we, do we actually need both constructors or is the latter one sufficient. I would just have them pass them there. I mean, I don't really care, but if it's a, a, you know something that very few people are going to actually do, do we actually need both? So you prob you probably would want only the last one because that way null is now ambiguous between these two middle constructors. Right. If you call them. I would like to add one thing that since we are talking uh, about the case when a response was, was received properly, I mean, there is no like transport issues and no protocol issues. Uh, the last constructor, uh, basically, if we use only one of the last constructor, we would pass uh, in exception always null. Because basically, there is no in exception if you have status code. Yeah, no, made a good point. We shouldn't have the first constructor because it will be a source breaking change. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could just make it non nullable, right? Yeah, I mean, why is it nullable? It's a new. So, yeah, well, but there's no status code if it fails before this. Well, well, then so you just the use the property other should be nullable, but the. the why do you, oh, the the you ever have to pass a null for this one? Like, if you don't have a status code, then just then use just the null. other one. Yeah. So I would just remove the nullable and then it would be non ambiguous. Well, okay, that works. But I mean, like, I agree with you that. If it's a more advanced thing, I would probably just rather have the last yeah, one. Yeah, it does mean that they can't all defer to just the longest constructor because they have no value to pass. Yeah. They'd have to be a internal constructor that took the last Did we make inner exception the only nullable? nullable users. If it's nullable, you can defer. Yes. If, if the parameter is not nullable because why are you calling it if you don't have one? No, but if you just have the longest one, it would be yeah. nullable. Yeah. Uh, to your question, you know, yes, I don't think this project has been nullable annotated yet. It has not. Sure, but like from a, from a, but do we, we I, mean, I suppose we both, do accept now for Both message and inner will be nullable. Yeah. yeah. 
And have you done this in other exceptions? Have you basically said like, yeah, you we just have a long one? I think most of the time we give you the combinations. Really? Like all like the full parameterization of all arguments? Well, I think the rationale, like not necessarily for all of them, but just between message uh, and inner, because inner is relatively rare. I feel like I've seen some exceptions that force you to go. Yeah. I can't think of oh, what they are offhand. Yeah, it would, like so, combining the null, the null literal. Parameter constructor with the we could leave the nullable on the last one just so that the implementation can be cascade. Is we just need to remove the question mark on the on the string and status code one. You would only call that one if you have a value, and if you maybe not won't have a value, then you pass null for it. Yeah, that's a good point. We don't need the maybe there. Yeah. Uh, I don't really care. It just seems I, you could probably count the number of people that are going to construct this thing on one hand. Yeah. Yeah, that's I think fair. I mean, you might do it for testing, but that's... Yeah. I'm fine getting rid of the, the first constructor. <laughs> At minimum, the question mark needs to go. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, inner would go with the very end. This is not the pattern we generally use. Um, I don't think so. The oh. pattern we use is you don't change, you don't insert parameters and overloads. Yeah, but I, I didn't know if exceptions were... Uh, the exceptions. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Clever. Uh, um, one question. <clears throat> Outs and cancellation token are the only. Okay. One question I have is like, if we have a status code, should we account. set the error code property? On the exception? Probably not, because the the error code really has to do with the exception itself, like the exception class, and the status code is just information contained within the exception. That's not how we use it though. IO exception usually has the Win32 error code in the error code. Yeah, yes, but that, that is part of the exception. Like that, is, that is the exception. Well, isn't it the same here? Like if you get a 404, wouldn't you expect to see 404 on the, on the error code? No. I mean, if, if you did that, it, it's a change in your behavior, right? Yeah. And. Well, and if it's today, if it's always to be zero. Fair, then we don't have a property on exception. Is the, we don't have a property on exception called error code. We have one called h result. Yeah. So the fact that it's returning the hr from IO is reasonable. Returning a HTTP status code as an h result is. is a, then you can't map it back to anything. Oh, that's right. I think we made h result public at some point, yes, right? Yes, we did. And then who has error code? Uh, some the, of the other HTTP exceptions have error code. Like the native property. exceptions, Win32 exception. Yeah. Oh, all the other ones. Oh, yeah, we defined it throughout the entire hierarchy. Yeah. And they're always ints? Nope, there no, are many cases. So should we just call it error code then? Uh, well, there, I think status code is in the realm of HTTP it makes more sense. Yeah. It, it maps more yeah. directly to what people would think of. Because they also might not be error codes. It's also called status code on the on the actual response message. Yeah. 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 I'm just asking the questions, man. Right? Like, no, not, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. So, okay, so we said we want to add the property. We said we will remove the middle constructor, right? Is that what we concluded? That was one of the possible conclusions. Yeah. There's, so I don't think anyone felt strongly about it. Yeah, I would just if turn out. If someone that. really wants it back, they can ask. Yeah. Not about making people type six characters comma null space. <laughs> you mean comma space null? All right, so then <laughs> this is a very long thread. Um, all right. Oh, great. My pop up is directly under my modal dialog, which does not help. All right, let's do this. Um,
We just want to get to this so we can get to Jeremy's fireworks issue. What is the fireworks issue? It sounds exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> is this Unicode fireworks? No. No? That's too bad. <laughs> That makes me a little nervous. Was there anything in that discussion that we need to factor in, or is it all? No, no. Uh, the the top level comment was kind of a summary of the discussion and yeah. the decisions we made around it. Uh, the last comment is basically what's now in the description. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we should we, we want that last status card property to be nullable, right? It is. Yeah. No, it's not. The property is nullable. You mean the, oh, parameter, the, the, parameter, the parameter. parameter? I think we decided no because you just don't call that overload if you don't have anything yeah. to pass in. We decided yes for the longest one so that all, all of the constructors could just defer to the longest one. Okay. Uh, we okay, decided no enough. for the middle one, which we didn't remove, uh, <laughs> so that null wasn't ambiguous. Okay. Hey, look at that. I have no idea what I was talking about. It looks right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then let's close this guy here. Cool. Isn't there a song where somebody says oi all the time? <laughs> All right, Jeremy. All right, so. Not that we care, but let's pretend we do. I, yeah. I care. So <laughs> since the days of antiquity, um, <laughs> like I think framework 1.0, we, did, yes, we, we had uh, system security cryptography OID, which is a, it's just a tuple of two strings, uh, but the two properties each are get set and annoyingly also modify each other. Um, because it's a mutable value, anywhere that we return it uh, in, in crypto API, we always return a copy. So calling things that look like simple properties are allocating, and calling things that look like simple properties that are complicated structures are complicatedly allocating. Uh, and based on casual evidence and you know less casual evidence of like looking at what APIs of .NET says the number of calls to the setters on these are, it looks like almost no one ever actually wants to set them. Uh, most people probably don't even know they're settable. Uh, and so the proposal is to make them not be settable in the future. Uh, and because someone could be doing it via object initializers right now, uh, the proposal, instead of making the set always throw, is essentially you get to set things and then it's done. Once they have a value, you can't change it. Uh, so that would let object initializers still work um, it means we don't have to return defensive copies, uh, but we no longer support. You've created the O and then you start mutating values and expect that to make sense. Does anyone like? Is there is this a real risk of a breaking change in the wild? I I, I don't think that anybody would really be broken by it. But it is a we are taking a success path and making it successful. Sure, no, so, I get that. I just you know, I'm trying so to this understand is, the broad end. But. Yeah, so this is, we're having the discussion. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, based on looking and the extremely low usage, uh, once I figured out the syntax of asking about the setter directly on APIs of .NET, uh, it, I, 
I don't think more than three people ever would be broken by this. Yeah. And we don't need thread safe assign one semantics if we're gonna start treating these as immutable singletons. If if you're talking about a typical factory pattern where someone returns a singleton, only one person ever initializes it in the first place, normally within like a lazy or something like that. So I wouldn't think that we would need any type of manual interlocked in here. Yeah. So like what we like in the platform we would start being able to have these objects pre-calculated for common values or lazy calculated as we get them and then just start returning them over and over and over again. Yeah. And uh, then there's no race problem. Uh, if somebody has a race condition with their own object initializer, then sorry. <laughs> what kind of libraries or application codes would actually create their own LID? Uh, the only time anybody ever really creates one is when they're using uh, like X509 chain saying that they they want to make sure that the certificate's good for uh, like TLS server authentication uh, because that API takes a OAuth collection. And then if they're doing uh, uh, creating elliptic curve uh, keys from OAuth based curve parameters. And there's no typical pattern where they might you know, initialize it to one thing and then have an if block and then override it to do something else. Not that, not that I've ever seen, and not that the API usage that we've captured suggests. Well, you also have a contingency in here for someone setting the value to the same thing twice, right? Uh, yeah. Like essentially, it's a, the, if you misclick in the debugger, it's not going to yell at you. Yeah. It is not. Why is it not? Because my pseudocode here is throw P and SE if you try changing it to something other than its current value. Yeah. Oh, so we set the same value then. That's yeah, fine. That's right. Yeah. Because it's really, 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 really annoying when you say enter and then you need to go x dot foo equals x dot foo and it tells you no. <laughs> it's like this statement doesn't do anything. Uh, AKA you hit enter in the debugger when you could have hit escape but didn't think about it. So I don't really expect a break, but uh, certainly we this never would have flown with in-place update framework. Uh, but side by side for core, <coughs> it's time to uh, see if maybe we can improve our internals and remove all these defensive copies. Can we make the set method uh, obsolete? So people only ever use it in structure. I mean, if we're going to start growing when they actually use it now, other than the first time. That, I, I don't know, that could make it difficult to port existing code that uses an ob object initializer syntax. I mean, we could always do like a code fixer or something. And of course, uh, hey, email. Have we decided whether or not we're allowed to put obsolete on things? <laughs> I have. <laughs> the question is just how we how we make sure that we don't break the the seal either. But like, uh, no, I, I think we I think we will probably land in a spot where we can. It's just now the question of like, are we just accepting the seal as a behavior or are we changing the seal as right? But like, I don't find it actionable to say, oh, we can never put an obsolete attribute on property because somebody might have seal as that. Like, well, that we, seems... we wouldn't put it on the property. We would put it on the set. Which I actually don't know what that's going to do to SNS um, That one, in my, yeah, my question will be more like is C sharp and this the way you expect it? Would it just give you the error on the setting but not on the reading? Uh, I mean, the, the compiler should only give it when you call set. You said should, and so I'm saying I'm, if that's the behavior, then I would agree with that, yes. Yeah, of course, if you use the serializer, it'll still see a call for the set, and so yeah. that warning's propagating through. Or sorry, if you use SGEN, uh, <coughs> that would still pop up. Yeah, I mean, the S-Gen scenario I don't care for because the, 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 realistically the serializer should just ignore right. the obsolete warning. Well, and in well. this case, like S-Gen and XML serializer will still work because we're allowing the properties to be set once. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, in your case, would you even obsolete it if you could? Probably not because you still want object connection initializers to work, right? Yeah, it's still fine. So, 
I think the best you probably could do is write a custom analyzer that will detect repeated assignments and say, well, this will not fly. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Wasn't your grand plan to remove the setters entirely at some point, or is that just not feasible? I mean, I would love to, but that's a that's a binary breaking change yeah. on roll forward, and I know that we roll forward isn't our you know P zero scenario, but it's still. I don't think that the that that break is worth it. Okay, uh, I'm fine with the object initializer. Okay. Works for me. Yeah, the only thing that'll be slightly weird on it is right now we have a bunch of places in the platform that we pass. Null is the friendly name in the constructor, which means lazy compute it in the getter, which means we need to now not do that because we need to not let somebody write to the friendly name setter before we lazily compute its value, but that, it's just that's just internal to test now. Yeah. I have faith in your coding ability. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, that looks good. If nobody has any concerns, I'll just approve it as is. Break it. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll find out, right? Yeah, some poor schmuck's going to have to write break and change docs, so we can all. <laughs> <laughs> Who would that be, Jeremy? Would you know? You said you were going to get back to writing docs. Say, who has two thumbs and now has to write a break and change document? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Kevin Jones approves it. Got that. that. <laughs> that makes anybody happy. Is he on the call? Or on YouTube? He's on he's YouTube. YouTube so he's on the call, except we can't hear what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> we can read what he's saying. He chimed in on the issue already. He said, yeah. yay. Although I, I think I can visualize what he's saying. Although, how do you say visualize when you're imagining sound? That's still in my visualization, right? Audioization? Is that a thing? Kinesthesia? Synesthesia. Synesthesia, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then you can visualize it. <laughs> All right, so does anybody know, do we actually milestone things right now correctly, or should I just not ignore milestones at all? If somebody's marked this five, Because we have non 5 in future, and I would just look at all of them. Yeah. Well, I want to say, Steve, a while back, I think you both I, moved. I both moved five. API ready for reviews, I think, or okay. some set of it in, into basically 5.0 to be like, yeah. we need to address sure. these or you know, address them or close them. Okay. Yeah, there's 16 that have no milestone. Yeah, we have four in future, and we have, let's say, 16, because that sounds about right. I don't have a preference. All right, then let's just go all this to news. Let's skip the ones that I always had our meeting for, which unfortunately there's a lot of them apparently. <laughs> you keep putting them off, I know. I know, it's horrible. Oh, here, I'll, uh, I'll give you an, a one that's actionable now because we've already approved enough things. Uh, 31201. Hold on, like, I would just, like, unless it's important, I would just, would just walk this in this order. Well, it'll make Kevin happy if he's on the call. Well, if it yeah, makes Kevin make happy. happy. <laughs> Okay, how about this? You make first Levi happy, then we make him. Yay! Um, so if you scroll to the... Uh, There's a bunch of German somewhere. in it, which means I'm not approving of this. Where, it where is. is the actual comment that I have in here? Street scroll street to around two thirds, three quarters of the way down. Oh, I can just search for Levi? Uh, you no. can search, yes. Apparently you don't show up here. Yeah, you have to search for grab your pitch So what? Grab your pitch forks. Oh, yeah. You don't have the exception installed? I, do. I have it, but it's off because otherwise the layout is all messed up. Keep going. There it is. So it's. Oh, oh yeah. there. Okay. So this is the. This is the API that I had uh, proposed adding to compare info. The the general idea behind this is when you're when you're calling index of 
sometimes you need to know how many characters match, especially if you're doing a linguistic match. Uh, for instance, if your search string contains literally S, S, and you're searching for the German S set character, for instance, and you're doing a K or you're doing a culture aware match, you'll need to know that even though the S set is a single character, the string that it matched within actually had a two character wide match. Otherwise, when you start doing things like slicing the string, you're going to get your bounds incorrect. Um, there was a little bit of a debate on the API as proposed here because I I was uh, I was just going to considering returning ranges, saying here's where the match began and here's where it ended within the original string. Um, there was an alternative proposal uh, that Tara had mentioned, one comment below, which is saying, well, perhaps we should actually just out ints rather than out ranges for certain APIs. Um, but in general, that's what it would look like. And then once we get the APIs settled on compare info, then we can figure out whether it makes sense to do it on string as well. I don't think it's that important to do it on string, but it is an option. So are these, are these start with, end with, and index out with different names? Yes. Yeah. Why are they different names? <laughs> because it doesn't return the actual index. It returns a range. If it returned an int, then index up would make sense. What we don't want to return. Was Tarek suggesting to return the index and have the out be the offset? Uh, he was suggesting that specifically for prefix going. and suffix, the first two that are listed there, but not necessarily the last two. The, the reason the reason that I'm not a fan of outing the int is that it makes it far too easy to discard. Whereas if you call this API, like you really need both values. You shouldn't just discard one of them and assume that you knew what it was. That's true for the existing one, isn't it? There is no existing one. There There is no way right now to get the match link. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. The existing one is index of that doesn't provide the match link. Correct. And there is there is no way right now. So. For instance, say that you wanted to write your own culture-aware string.replace method. You can't do that. You no, no, our public I, I understand that. My yeah. point is, there is an existing overload that mm -hmm. is index of that returns int. Mm -hmm. Isn't there benefit to having an index of that returns int and then also has the length as an out? Because then there's a natural progression from using one to the next. Possibly. Um, this was also based on what I was experimenting with in the UTF-8 string, where there is no index of method at all because there's no concept of an index in the string. It's just an opaque beginning and an opaque end. If that's not if that's not a pattern that's viable for these APIs, then so be it. I mean, I get the value of the range. Yeah. It's nice because then it makes it easy to <coughs> index via the range subsequently. Mm -hmm. Although, if you expect that these would be used with strings implicitly cast to sources, then having the range is going to encourage people to slice the string. Presumably, if you're calling these APIs, you wanted to slice at some point. So then, why spans. not just return the span, the sp span slice? Because if if you're not working with spans, if you're working with strings, then you can easily call the indexer that takes a range and hey, you've now you've now called substring. That's my concern. That's that's my my concern though is. Would we be encouraging people to create substrings where they otherwise wouldn't? I'm not terribly concerned about that because if people cared about performance to that granularity, they probably would have been using span or memory in the first place. The other thing about using range here is say that you have a memory of char instead of a span of char, you can now slice it using the range. No, no, I, yeah. I, I'm not. I don't think we should return a span. Mm -hmm. I was questioning the returning of the range versus the int. Sure. But I, I'm not, I'm not, want to. I'm not yeah. suggesting we do one or the other. I'm just trying to understand mm -hmm. the ramifications. I feel it's like also returning an int is yeah. just better anchored with our current APIs. It, it is. Um, is prefix and is suffix are a bit of a strange case because right now those methods return bool, and what would they out for the int? Would they out one int? Would they out two ints? Why not just one? Why do you need two? Because the something might be a prefix but not actually occur at the beginning of the string. There are weird edge cases where that can happen. Did I say this one more time? <laughs> it didn't sound like it. How is that a prefix? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If everything before it is throwaway. 
if you have basically if you say ignore white space for instance then you could have a bunch of white space and then the actual thing that you're looking for oh. is prefix would return true but what you're looking for didn't actually match <clears throat> at index zero in the string it matched at index after the white space that's still that's the same as what starts with today yes why wouldn't the there's no length just right? include that there is prefix, prefix of stuff well that's what Tarek had suggested um, the including that means that we have to add a lot of logic onto what NLS and ICU do today and I didn't I didn't want to have us have opinions on top of what our underlying layers did what is the logic there then the logic that the logic that they implement right now is we'll tell you exactly where what you searched for actually began right. and we will skip over uh, zero weight things while we're looking for those. Right, but wouldn't the logic just be add the index? We we could internally say sure it really began at index zero and you had this whole thing match. Um, I'm not necessarily comfortable doing that because we're now manipulating the result that we got back from our underlying. We're already numbers. doing that though. Not here. Sure, we are. Like, oh. The fact that we're saying like this was the range in the original span that you gave us, there's an implicit indication that, like, it, it comes. It, 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 if the index was four, like, it's four into the source. Yeah, that, that's what our underlying libraries are telling us today. Right. How is it any? How how are we manipulating things by saying it's four into the source? Like, I, I I'm not understanding. I, I guess I don't understand the question you just asked. What, what is the manipulation that you're concerned about? The, the manipulation we're concerned about is right now, today, we call into Windows or ICU and it says, I found a match for your thing. Yep. Your match started at index 3, yep. it ended at index 7. Yep. For but the, the API we're calling isn't called prefix. The is prefix, is that not what we're talking about? No, no. The, API, the NLS API we're calling yep. isn't called is prefix. It, no, but we pass, in, we pass in a flag that says, please only return a value to us if it is a prefix match, otherwise return error. And it returns to us a tuple, which is starts at three, ends at seven. Oh, and by the way, it's a prefix match. What we do is we take that last one, turn it into a bool, and pop it back out to the caller. We don't do any other manipulation of the return values. We could. Yeah, I mean, I guess there is utility in having the range of specifically what matched. Um, you know, if you ask to ignore white space, then. You probably want to have your actual match and not the white space, but yeah. You know, giving like giving the specific match, it's easy to write yourself what was the outer or what was the and include the leading white space. Yeah. Uh, if you do the other one, you have to do a second call of now that you've now that you've sliced down to the part that you care about. Oh, now yeah. ask index of and let it tell you where the white space ended. So you'd be you know. Like giving the which, by the way, we provide no API for that. Right? <clears throat> sure, you just call try find uh, with the same thing you called starts with or is prefix on. Sure, uh, using the match link that we told you. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so it would be one hundred percent redundant work. Yeah, so giving if we're going to be giving more information, giving the most think, useful yeah. information seems think, the most useful. So think think of it like this: say that um say that you're implementing a text highlighter inside your IDE and you tell it ignore quotes, like you don't want the thing, you don't want the highlight to also match the quotes that you're ignoring. You want it to match only what's within the quotes. Okay. So if we return to you something that include, if we return to you a range that includes the quotes, you could potentially be highlighting the wrong thing within your ID. But we're not passing in something here that says ignore white space. Uh, compare options has flags on it that say things like ignore quotes, ignore other things while you're doing search, ignore dashes. So if you say if 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 my string was quote Steve end quote yeah and I said is this a prefix match for Steve ignore quotes yes. it will return yes it will return yes well that's weird but you explicitly <laughs> said ignore quotes at the call site and that's what starts with is currently doing yeah no, that's, that's you at, at that point you explicitly at the call site passed in compare options ignore punctuation no I get it it just it's a weird definition. 
starts with the prefix. Yes. The, yeah. the, re the reason for it is because when you're doing things like uh, searching for people's <coughs> last names in the database, for instance, you often want to ignore punctuation because maybe your last name is hyphenated and you want kind of a fuzzy match. So there, there are scenarios for it. They're not common. Though. What is considered punctuation? Uh, dash, um, a few other things that I forget offhand. Is, that like a, one. is there like a char category for it? Or? I don't think so. I think, I think the is. thing that I find just the strangest about this is just the mi I mean, it's minor, but that we're introducing four new names for concepts that already exist. So yeah. those, those These two are at the top are not new names. Those two at the top are overloads of existing APIs. Of string APIs. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Is prefix and is suffix are existing APIs on compare input? Yes. Okay. There is a Unicode category for punctuation. There is, but I don't know if that's what gets ignored when you say ignore punctuation. Oh. It's, it's strange. <laughs> so question about overloads. We have another API that was approved. I think you linked to it. Mm -hmm. uh, that has compare options as an optional parameter. So it has source, prefix, options as optional parameter. And now we have we adding this where it's options is non-optional and then we have out. Do we want to change either of those so that they overload nicer or is it just find the way they are? Sorry, say that again. So you're saying like we should default we, options? That's that, so I, I yeah. don't want to have an overload. I don't want to, sorry, are you suggesting having having only the overload that outs the light? Or not? Um, so default options. If you default options, then you can merge the two APIs. How do you default options with an out? Yeah, 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 I guess you can. Oh, you you can move it. The, yeah. 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 the other thing is we don't we don't want to force people to take the out if they're just going to discard it because we actually do end up calculating. We end up doing more work under the covers in order to get out result more. Right, but you already have the existing um, source prefix and options API, yeah. not for spans. Correct. They are. There's a PR out for them now where they're introduced, but they're not currently checked in. Oh, we have a PR for the span. Like for the spanified comparison. Yeah, it's this thing. There, there are span currently no span-based APIs that are relevant on comparison. And options so that one. means you have, you're proposing one, adding a new set of APIs that do not give you back the indices. Correct. Then we ex then you propose to have one that gives you back this as a range, which if we care, we probably also want for strings because otherwise you'll have an implicit conversion, which we probably don't want. Um, so that's a decent amount of APIs they're talking about, right? Yes. If you want to take a look at the one at the bottom, there's a link related to 5428 at the bottom of this uh, page. Yeah. It's, it's the blue text. Let's scroll up. That blue text. <coughs> so those were already approved. Mm -hmm. I actually need to bring this back for review because I wanted more overloads than this. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones. Look at the it's suffix is prefix. Yeah. These these are literally just straight up span overloads okay. of existing, uh, string, existing string based APIs. Except I don't think string has options as optional. It has two overloads. It Correct. Two overloads. It, it doesn't have options. Optional by overload. Yeah. yeah. Everything you see here already has a string equivalent. Right. But in the new one you could still have you could out the range and have compare options <coughs> be Defaulted. Uh, yes, you would have to use named parameters to call it. But you why the default? Why well, wouldn't you have an out? Yeah, it that's going to be like you have thing thing and an out. That is a not a match to any existing overloads. And then if you say comma, also I have more parameters. Okay. Then, but why would? In what situation? I'm just we're adding the other one with defaulted parameters. The string one yeah. has previously had the overload that didn't take the. It just seems to me like the, this. This is a way. Like let's say you have is prefix with source and, and like I want to call is prefix with source and prefix. Yeah. This overload lets me do that, plus it allows me to pass the compare options. And then adding the overload that takes a range as well allows me to do source prefix, source prefix options, and source prefix options range. Sure. I'm just like as I asked why is why are you doing it as default in the other proposal and not in this one? Yeah, I'm saying we couldn't. Oh, yeah. And well, I said so, we could. But I'm, I'm saying <laughs> so the answer you can, is, you can I'm saying the answer is if you want all three things, you want to be able to pass source prefix, you want to be able to pass source prefix options, and you want to be able to pass source prefix options out match. Yeah. You can do that with only two methods by having options be default on one and not on the other. Yes. You, uh, okay. So if you if you um, care yes. if you care about getting back the actual range. 
you're probably doing the equivalent of stringed off replace or you're probably in a highlighting scenario like I mentioned earlier, at which point you're probably passing in explicit compare options. It's fair. I see. Addressing the, it can't be done. Yep, yep. Yeah. It could be done. So after all the explanation, I think the one thing that still stands out to me is that we shouldn't introduce the name try find. Sure, sure. So let's call it index of, last index of, return it in alpha length. I'd even be fine if we call it index of and we return a bool. I mean, the out argument is still a range that includes an index. That's weird to me. I, well, I that, that's weird to me too. Right. Then, then we should return the yeah, int. return int out int. Just yeah, taking okay. the existing thing and also outing match length. So is prefix the suffix would they return bool and out two integers in? Does that match? Right, it doesn't. Right. Do we? Do you um, honestly really think that's good? Because then the, the program model between these methods is substantially different. Do we really want that? We could also follow Tarek's suggestion and just say we only out the length for its prefix and the suffix. And if you were looking for where the text actually matched, sorry, we don't expose an API for it. That seems problematic, though, because if you're assuming that the prefix begins in if we only give out the length and you're assuming it begins at the beginning and it doesn't necessarily begin in the beginning, is the length actually useful to you? We would we would adjust the length that we return to so you, account for You that. would do the manipulation that you didn't want yes. to do. So if if the API told us it starts at, in, it's a prefix match, it starts at index three and it's length four, you would we would to return seven. to you true seven. Yeah. Yeah. And you then if you really up. cared about where we're referring, you'd have to do the second call. Yeah. I don't have a strong opinion on is one. We could we could do that easily enough. What's your reasoning for not liking the name try find? It's a new name for something we already have names for. It's it's a new concept. It's I new. I had ripped this off of the UTF H train design, which did not expose any methods at all called index of. Yeah. It, this is a, a logical overload of the existing method index of with yeah. a different name. Yeah. Because the fact that we have range and rather than do it the right yeah. names are. Which because this was this was trying to this was trying to get you to think of things not in terms of raw indices but in terms of slices. So if you call try find, you can, with that information, slice everything before it, slice the occurrence itself, or slice everything after it, without at any point ever needing to know what an index was. That was the use case for it. OK, can we now summarize where we are? Because honestly, I lost track. So are we, are we now saying that we want these overloads is the way they are, or are we saying we don't? Because what I'm hearing is like kind of a mixture. So I think. For its prefix, it seems like we're all generally in agreement that the name is right, outing a range is fine. The only thing I heard was compare options, whether it should be optional or not. No, so I think, I, I don't think there's a large scenario for it yeah, to be optional. Yeah, to be I honest. think we move beyond that. I think the only question is, is are is pre, so for is prefix and is yeah. suffix, are they as written, or is it returning an int and an out int, or is it returning a bool and an out int? That's the open question for those. I think for the last two, it was, decided that they are index of, last index of, returning an int with an out int. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think that the is is should return anything other than a bool. I, I agree. The answer to is is bool. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the question is, is it out range or out int? Yeah. We should probably unify them and say out int for all of them then. <coughs> I, I mean, I would say out range. For all of them? No, so index of we're overloading. It's, yeah. it's the existing overload tells you where it found it. Yep. We're also adding this is how long it was. Okay. So that's the we're overloading the existing thing where where you have the constraints of the method that already exists. For the is prefix where we previously only had a boolean, now we're also giving you two additional two pieces of information. Right. This is where the text portion of the match started, uh, discarding any ignore things, and this is where it ended because range tells you where it ended, not how long it is. Uh, yeah, and uh, and so I like that seems to be the everything you want to do or everything you could want to do you can do with that information. And if we were, if we out match link, then now in half of the scenarios we can think of, you're just calling that index of immediately again uh, to find out that the only thing that was before it was white space. So I think that the range would make sense. I would do that rather than. Two out ints, okay. and I would do that rather than out just the link. So leave the first Question two the same. same. The last two become public int index of public int index of last, and then out int match link. Yeah, yeah, last, last index of, next up, not index of last. Yes, sorry, you're right. Yeah. I, I really can't really good. So I think <laughs> the first two are good as is. Okay. Uh, sure, works for me. Anyone disagree with the first two as is? 
It's prefix and it's suffix. Outing the range. I'm okay with that. The only thing is I want a string based version of that. Why? Because that's what we have always done. The I think this use case is advanced enough where I don't know if many people would actually use that API if you were to add it. It's not about the people, it's about the language they're using. Because it relies on an implicit conversion from string to span. You can call app.span. Sure. I guess that's fair. Any? Unless COBOL not that simply understands it yeah. doesn't have the mod rec for span and then says you can't ever have that as a local. Yeah. So you couldn't call yeah. it span. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the, the number of people who are going to be calling this who who absolutely need to pass in string and don't have the ability to use something like ASPAM, I think are zero. And it would be easy enough for us to add the string overload in the future. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, really, yeah. Like, it's just the, like, if we add yeah. string, string options out match, and it just calls ASPAM for you, like, yeah. it's... It is for you. And we had Why examples of other APIs that we've added some yeah, sort of almost every single one of them. Yeah, yeah. but this is yeah, like what like percentage of apps directly use support. methods on compare info? I mean, we're very already good. talking about what the one percent is. Very, yeah. very then important. how many of those directly call is span is yeah. suffix yeah. today? I mean, if we if we introduce a methods on string, obviously they would take string as inputs. Well, they would. I mean, I this would already be a string as an input. Yeah, this would already be a string. So target would also be a string. I mean, I, I'm expecting, like, how many people in the world are going to call these new methods? Yeah, uh, UI-based yeah. applications will probably call these. But, but I'm, I'm talking about things like text editors. Well, well yeah, but yeah. that's a very specialized case. Yeah, 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 yeah. But cur currently they have no workaround, that's sure. the thing. Oh, I'm not saying we shouldn't yeah. add it. I'm saying, like, the span ones yeah. seem significant. Yeah. And those particular types of applications probably don't want to be creating substrings absolutely everywhere. Yeah. All right, so then the first two, we're okay with them as is. Okay, now the last two. Uh, change bool to int. Yep. Change try find to index of and try find last to last index of. Mm -hmm. And change out range match. Hold on, hold on. No, <laughs> of. Okay, I want to type so much. <laughs> All um, right, index of last index of, yes. And the last parameter becomes out int match length. Out and match length. Is match the term we've used in other cases for similar? It's what we use internally. Um, match length pointer, yeah. Yeah. I'm more interested in other mm -hmm. APIs where we return, I mean, there are very few APIs where we return a range is an out, but if we have any, or if we have places where we return, uh, you know, out a length or. Sure. So maybe like a race segment or something? Yeah, like I don't know. Maybe match is fine. I mean, well, I think length is the key word here. So yeah. whether you, if you say match length, it just makes it slightly more clear. Yeah. But. I mean, Redix Drummer has a vetted method called match length. Yeah. Yeah. I think match length is a good one. Yeah. So another thing is that we could just return the tuple offset length. <laughs> but, no. Uh, well, you couldn't, then you wouldn't have a... It would have to be a different method name. Yeah. If you can return a tuple, you can... You might as well return a range, right? Yeah. Especially if it's exactly the tuple <laughs> <you can't return. laughs> <laughs> Then it would have to be normal. Okay. Especially when you make it notable, I would not return a tuple. <laughs> I mean... Okay, it sounds good. <clears throat> like once you need a parser to read the return type. Do we have guidance on when we can use range and when we shouldn't? So I, I kind of yes. linked up there at the top because the floodgates are open and now I'm very happy. Uh, I noticed from last week, yeah. So essentially it's if you were going to take in a span and return a span and then go, crap, now I need to take in a, a read-only span and a writable span and a read-only memory and a writable memory, the answer is you should have instead returned range. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then now we don't need to define four of every method. Yeah. Just had the read span one. So yeah, take out read only span, return to range. Because now, like Jeremy said, you can you can span or you can slice arrays, strings, memory spans, and anything that we introduce in the future, you can slice. Yeah. Which is nice. Is there any drawback? Maybe in terms of like performance or otherwise, yeah. slicing a range. We could we could <coughs> fix that at the chip level. The, the caller, like it's, the caller has the 
the slate, looking at their code of like, why are you making me say thing sub go find where this was? Why didn't you just? And it's like, well, because otherwise we needed four of them because we need to. Yeah. Uh, I see. So it's like there there is a good reason that you have to write one more expression. <coughs> uh, it it does look a little wonky when like the the floodgates API uh, was we return a struct that has three ranges on it, yeah. and then it was like, that's, I gave you an input, and now I have to give take that input and then access the right range, and, and it's like, so it looks a little weird, but it solves so many problems. Awesome. Also made something not need to be a red struct. <laughs> <laughs> Which solves so many problems. <laughs> Thank you, Emo. Uh, and so for the last two, now that they are overloads of index of, do we do we want the string overloads that out the match link, or are we going to make those people go down to uh, if cross char as well? There are many, many, many different overloads of index of and last index of because there are overloads that take offset, length, some combination of the two, um, and they have very odd behavior. So you're, and I I don't want to add those overloads. Okay. Which means I don't want to add the string like that's in general. I I'm merely asking the question. <laughs> yeah, those overloads are fun because those overloads take like a start index of three and a length of two, and what it actually means is run backward from where I told you to start from. So this is what I have. Are we happy with that? Works for me. Double checking. Uh, yep, looks like I'll use what we call it. Yeah. Yeah. I just picked that. Okay. <coughs> All right. It's not inventing new names, it's inventing new paradigms. Paradigms. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one that makes Kevin happy? This one? No. Yeah. Oh, that's the one we just did. Oh, well, Kevin's uh, going to be a very happy one. <laughs> yeah. uh, do it again. 31201. 31201. Ooh, Kevin is going to be happy. Yeah. This is where my eyes plays up. Yep. <laughs> okay. There goes the remaining one. Right. Not really. It's crypto, so no one cares. Um, <laughs> cool. Approved so, <laughs> so in 3.0, we added um, a bunch of import methods on asymmetric algorithm types to, to read from common file formats. Um, but we required them all to be in their binary representation instead of their text representation, uh, partially because the text representation is complicated. Um, but we simplified what we're going to accept with another proposal for 5.0 of adding the thing encoding uh, reader, aka the thing that's returning a struct with three ranges in it. And uh, so then now with that, we can make a uh, common implementation. Uh, so. Like the RSA class can understand these are the three file formats that I can read and uh, then deal with that. So this lets us lets people import things from a text file, which is what they are ninety nine percent likely to have on a uh, Linux system. So is this a, is that a file path then, or is that a string? Uh, it is the it is the text that you have already read out of the out of the file. Okay. And then we can also add the string uh, version to just, or on asymmetric algorithm, we can add the string version to uh, just call in. So I don't think we did that previously with the password and password bytes because they were complicated. What do the virtual methods do by default? Uh, throw. Should we just? So silly question, why wouldn't we just declare these as individual methods on each subclass type? Uh, because if you had just an asymmetric algorithm, you could, if you have it like the PKCSA, uh, there's no reason that importing at that level wouldn't work. Okay. <laughs> and the PEM specifies the password uh, 
uh, digest algorithm, right? Yes. What does PEM stand for? Privacy Enhanced Mail. Uh, <laughs> but in the context of cryptographic keys, it stands for PEM. <laughs> it's one of those acronyms that has lost its meaning and instead means the text-based representation of things. What are the, is the encoding involved with password bytes? Or just? Uh, if you're giving password bytes, it means you have chosen the encoding for us yeah. and that UTF-8 was wrong. Yeah. So you literally, it's just raw bytes for you? You don't care at all what the encoding is? The password bytes version, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the same thing that we have on the existing imports from encrypted yeah. PKC. A, a lot of the old uh, crypto standards just used octets for everything, such as password, and they never really defined how human text passwords were supposed to be turned into octets. So it's up to the application to figure out how to do that. And then once you have that binary data, then you pass it in here. But it was like 1992, so the answer was it's ASCII. Yeah. So of course everybody understood what they meant. And then then later they're like, well, obviously what they meant was UTF-8, because that makes the passwords keep working. To be honest, I liked ASCII. <laughs> ASCII's great. It was a great world. Yeah. There's no S set. We can't do Klingon, <laughs> but that seems acceptable. <laughs> but yeah, so this is just merging a 3.0 feature with a 5.0 feature into a better 5.0 feature. What was a 3.0 feature? Uh, import from import PKCSA private key. Yes, OK. Uh, and the 5.0 feature was PIM encoding that only understands the Product. restricted subset so we don't have to deal with the annoyance of attributes. And you didn't have a need to uh, to like out the number of things that you read from the PEM, right? I guess it doesn't really matter. You expect this to be a standalone PEM, right? It's the you find it yeah. in the middle of the payload. Yeah, we'll read it from the middle of the payload because that's what OpenSSL will do. So what I'm hearing is the API looks good as proposed. Yeah, looks fine. Um, yeah. I mean it's public virtual, but so is everything else on that class. Uh, instead of saying public override, uh, instead of public deferring to a core, there's no. There's no input to validate, so the core doesn't play out anyway. So these are just setting the keys. Oh, and then um, on the uh, yes, it's loading the contents in the file and setting it. Uh, that presumably, <coughs> we, actually, I don't know. If, I don't know if we want the string overloads <coughs> or not. Well, for virtuals, it seems bad, right? Uh, well, they would. The string overloads will be virtual. Fair enough. I mean, that's, I mean, as you rightfully observe, if we make an argument earlier that 3% usage is not high enough to warrant an overload, I have no idea what percentage this would be, but 3% uh, sounds about right, so. 3% sounds generous for us. Yeah. Okay. Does the file indicate which algorithm it's intended for? Does it make sense to have this be like a static that returns in a uh, algorithm? So, uh, the answer would be yes, except in .NET Framework 3.5, they made ECDSA and ec diffie Hellman be different types, and they are the exact same structure of key. Uh, so all that we know is it is an elliptic curve cryptography key, and we couldn't tell you which one to do, so we can't make a helper that uh, takes a file and produces a generic key. Does this need to be a try method then? Uh, it's a throwing method. So you would just try try catch. Well, you've already loaded it. Like you've said, this is an RSA, and you're importing. And if, it, if we didn't find a, a key in it that's appropriate, or yeah, we don't find a key in the file, then we'll throw. How would you know that it's RSA without cracking open the pen and looking at it yourself? How would you know if you called import from subject public key info that it was or wasn't RSA? Fair. Call or talk. Well, that's that goes back <laughs> to the factory. Thing that's what uh, yeah, no, that like it's an existing it's, yeah. a, it's an existing problem. This is making. It's easier work. if people have the PIM and want the current methods. Uh, it doesn't solve the problem of them understanding. This, this, is, this is why, like, just burn down the crypto stack and redo it. <laughs> See, the problem is we have done this. No, we didn't. Not with the crypto stack. Y yes, Windows did that. The Winner T APIs are slightly better, but it's still the same kind of thing, so I'm not sure this would do much. Yeah, but we didn't do it. Yeah, oh, yeah. excuse me. That's how The trouble is we've already taken all the best names for everything. We have, yeah. Uh, and we need to come up with, like, use system cryptography instead of system security cryptography. Why? Yes, because we needed a different word. So, yeah, because when I when I type in AES dot, auto, com, uh, auto suggest now suggests the intrinsics. Good All job, right. boss. So Tim is also on the call. Tim wanted us to look at this one, and since Jeremy apparently already pushed it to read it and paid it for review, you can probably talk us through it. 
Yeah, so um, uh, we've also gotten this request internally. It's uh, There are protocols where while downloading large files, they'll tell you, like, this is the SHA-256 of the file when you've downloaded one meg. This is the SHA-256 when you've downloaded two meg, instead of giving you the, the differential hash of the second meg. Uh, our current API, when you ask for the result, it's thrown away all of the state, because that's actually how the algorithm works. Um, and so that means that <coughs> If you're trying to do the roll and continue hash algorithm, you need to already open like six of them in parallel and keep feeding the data into all of them and then shrinking it as you go. Uh, people find that annoying, unsurprisingly. So uh, this is a, a has a new method which, given an existing uh, incremental hash object, it will clone the internal state. So on uh, effectively, that's now you've, you've built another one that you've loaded all of the same data into because it hasn't finalized the result yet. Uh, so it lets you just pull off a duplicate hash called get value or get result and reset, and then you don't care that it reset because you're done with it, and then you just keep moving on with your incremental voice. Uh, so that's the, the theory of duplicate hash, and then uh, additionally, or alternatively, there's uh, Try get current hash slash get current hash, which just does that for you, so you don't have to see the, you don't have to put the answer in a using. The duplicate is good if you want to fork, like you know, these files are the same for the first meg, and then they're different after that, and I know that, and just trust me. Uh, and try get current hash for the rolling hash is actually just more of what you want. So it's that's get hash without reset and also without tainting it with the length of the current value. So incremental hash already exists, I suppose, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, because it was like, how do you construct one? And right. Compute. Yeah, so this is uh, adding the duplicate slash give me the current value without uh, resetting uh, on the existing type. I think both are fine. Like, certain, effectively, try get current hash is going to be written in terms of duplicate, but we can hide that under the covers for you. And uh, we can probably even do better, and or yeah, we can do better and not create the uh, intermediate disposable values. Yeah. The the original proposal just had try get current and get current hash. Basically, it just said give me give me the moment in time answer, and then let me keep working with this instance. Um, I had suggested as a more generalized solution, uh, being able to actually fork the entire instance so that you can now have separate operations running on each. It is a more generalized solution, but I can't. Think of any scenarios that would warrant a more generalized solution. The scenarios that I'm familiar with all only ever require a moment in time answer, and then you keep going. So you lost me. What's the difference between? So a moment in time answer, as Jeremy said, is give give. If I were to ask you for the answer right this very second, right. please tell me what it would be. But allow me to keep working with this object after you tell me what the answer would have been right now. Okay. Right. Whereas a fork is literally a yeah. fork to completely independent instances now that you can manipulate separately where neither affects the other. I see what you're saying. So basically, yeah. when it, like if your problem is you have to produce in, you know, hashes along the way, yes. then the point in time is good enough. Mm -hmm. Versus duplicate hash, also allow you know you can like append different data and yes. whatever. Right? And so, my comment in this issue was it is a more generalized solution to have a, a fork, but I'm having trouble thinking of a scenario where it's needed. So basically what you're saying is that the API that we have here is good enough that we could remove duplicate hash. Right, so They're all known scenarios. Yes. Try get current hash solves all the current needs anyone has asked for. Right. Duplicate hash lets you more easily compute the hashes of uh, the real timeline and alternate timeline and back yes. to the future. <laughs> like I said, it, it's more, the reason I suggested it is it's more generalized, but I don't know who would need that more generalized functionality. Yeah. Well, if I build my quantum universe, it's useful. Yeah. Um, so my only question is, like, why we have all these hash suffixes? Do we think they're useful? Uh, so the current method that you, that, it, that exists on it is get hash and reset. Uh, and I try see. get hash and reset. So this is... 
the, the current is to indicate that it's not resetting its point in time, it's not corrupting, and, uh, and then duplicate hash we could call clone. Uh, there is a verb for that, but it's also generally... Can we make it iClonable? <laughs> yes, that's what becomes a dirty word. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I wouldn't... I mean, hey. iClonable is bad, I don't think clone is bad. Like, as long as you, like... Right. I think clone returning object is bad. Don't yeah. do that. But like, duplicate, no, this, this one returning. Yeah. duplicate yeah. hash, I believe, is what the Win32 method is named. Yeah. Um, one decade, it's perfect. Uh, <laughs> or decrypt duplicate hash. <laughs> because it's a handle, and you duplicate a handle. Yes. Yeah, um, in there. Um, but, yeah, so I mean, we could, we could call it clone. We could delete the top one until there's a stronger need for it. I mean, uh, based on what, what Levi just said, I would probably start with that. Okay. But I would probably call it clone, yeah, because that people I think know what that would mean. Wait, so you would you would do the full generalized solution? That's what no, I'm just I would say I would remove the first okay, okay. method for now. But if we were to do it, I would probably call it. Okay, yeah. If somebody clone. comes back and says they want to be able to do hash forking. That <clears throat> that we had incremental hash not clone. Hash forking. Yeah. I I can work some. Quick, quick, write a paper. <laughs> Generalized attack by utilizing a mechanism for hash code forking. It seems like something I could read somehow. Sure. And yeah, it would be it would be pretty straightforward for us to add a more generalized one in the future if we cared. Okay. Um. So, is there any contention on those last two methods as proposed? They seem pretty straightforward. Um, well, the the second one clearly seems pretty straightforward. The first one, is my only question would be, is that the pattern we have? But I think that's yeah. the right one, right? Yeah, we have we have git hash and reset that returns a byte array and a try version that takes a destination and outs number of bytes. Return. So it's it's a perfect analogy. Yeah. yeah. Is there a way for the user to know how big the span to pass in? Main thing criminal hash tells you how big it is. It does not, but presumably, oh, you can get the algorithm name. I mean, presumably, you, the caller, are the one that created this in the first place. So presumably, you know how big the digest is. And if it's if we don't already have the link, then it's probably already annoyed me in the past. And if we want to give the comment here, if the ha incremental hash should tell you how long the hash is going to produce is, then that would you know, be a very funny thing to add. <laughs> I'm looking at the structure. Yeah, because I'm trying to see like, how someone would use it and know how big it was meant to pass in and what they're yeah. doing. As you mentioned, Jeremy, usually when they when this return calls. Well, yeah. again, gen generally the caller should know how long it is because the caller is the one that created it. So I'm kind of wrong. I mean, in the middle of all of the, you know, PBKDF stuff, yeah. in the middle of like, I don't know, somebody else picked an algorithm and gave it to me. And, and do we have a throwing uh, API already? Yeah. The well, one that we don't have a throwing when we have a, we only have the returning one. Oh, we yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have one that takes span destination and, and just throws if it's too short. Yeah. Right. So, so how, how, how are we addressing the guideline that if you have a try method, have one that throws? Well, that is the one, basically, but this one would never throw because it just knows, knows he, how to create the array. It has one that doesn't fail. Yeah. <laughs> the point is you don't want an API that takes span, right? It's not a, it's not a point to have an API that throws, right? The point well, is to have an API I mean, that doesn't. No, the, the, this, there's there's two things. There's one that says if you have a try method, have one that is non-try that throws. Well, have one that it's not the point that it throws. The point is that it's not requiring you to do the dance. I see. Yeah. But okay. this yeah. one knows the size, I see, I see, but would never throw. I mean, we have gotcha. like, we like also it have, might oom, but like that's yeah. not yeah. a thing. We right? do have in the buffer. We return the binary. Yeah. In the buffer yeah. guidance, yeah. the suggestion that if it's easy that you could know that the try should succeed, that that. Like we could add get current hash that's void returning and takes the destination span. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine too. And especially I probably especially already, if we add the length. Yes, I probably also wanted that. So, uh, did you want to add a hash length and bytes property at the same time to incremental hash? Yeah. Okay. I would like that. I'm just saying we can say while we're looking at the type of like, hmm, this was added early <laughs> in our span stuff, and yeah. we want to add get current hash that takes destination and returns uh, returns the number of bytes it wrote to and throws if it's too small. Yeah. And then do the same for try get hash and reset. Uh, would be get hash and reset and then add the link. So, yeah. What's but I mean, can, can we approve the new property right now though without having a formal API 
if you pull again. It just means Emo has to add it as snark if you were missing this in your proposal. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I mean, that's to me. That's what, what I mean. That that is the formal process to add this property, right? Just it's because you just brought it up doesn't mean it's not formal. I mean, I can add it onto his behalf right here. So, so what's the name of the property you want? Public hash length in bytes. What is it? Long then or int? Int. int. Hash okay. bytes. Is that what? A long hash length. Of hash. <laughs> hash length in bytes. Also oh, yeah. hash. Half hash length bytes. in bytes. Yes. Yeah. Get only int property. Jesus, it seems a mouthful, but okay. Oh. A lot of. What's the API? Some binary bits, so. Are we usually using in bytes as a as a get hash and reset? Yeah, I think it's an important differentiator here because you don't know if it's bits, like SHA-256 Yeah, is I'm, not, bits. I'm not saying we shouldn't have bytes. I'm just saying the verbiage in bytes is that the way we do it because normally I think we just say bytes. If yeah. Without having in bytes, every single person who uses this API is going to have to go to MSDM. Well, I think it's read the documentation it's saying, do I have to divide bytes? Is, is your suggestion that it's just hash link bytes? Yes. That sounds like a buffer. Yeah. Well, the, the, I'm, I'm just asking like how we don't how we normally do it. Like I don't have a strong. I, I just said in bytes seems something I've never heard before. Well, I look on APIs of .NET, but it's not loading. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to load once, so now I don't, I'm not closing it. Yeah. So I'm just looking at it because it loads on my machine. So clearly the problem is you. Uh, yeah. Look at all in those bytes APIs is, that are called the in, bytes, in yeah. bytes suffix. <laughs> Most of it are so not in system bytes. though, right? So. Actually, none of them are in the system. Uh, system web caching. Yep. Okay, that's one yeah, out of no. I think 40. the reason it sounds funny is because it's it's not just length in bytes, it's hash length in bytes, yeah. but that's an important differentiator here. Well, yeah. on hash algorithm, we just have hash size. And the problem with that is, is it in bits or bytes? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, yeah so, maybe, look it up so hash size in bytes, maybe. Yeah. That saves like two characters. <laughs> well, it's the, are we using the same terms across uh, okay. length versus yeah. size, mm -hmm. or half size. So um, hash size in bytes then, okay. <coughs> okay, so what was the version of this one? Uh, of telling you what the length is. So that so you can you construct do... the other one without going like 500 times. Yeah, so yeah. you don't have to do guess and check with the, <coughs> with the try, and uh, I think the thing that I've done in places where I've been annoyed that I didn't have this property myself is call the array return it one once and then just pass that back in to try and get on, on reset. <laughs> What's the usual size range for hash size in bytes? The biggest one that we have is SHA-2, 512, which is whatever 512 divided by 8 is. 32? So, I see. So it, no, 64. And then I, will, we, will we always know hash size in bytes? Yes. Is all this yeah. You've told us what the algorithm is. Yes, yeah, so in that case, why do we have, even have the try get? Just have the one that takes span of byte. And out, uh, actually, yeah, just span of byte. Oh, well, parity and yes, for the you, you're in the middle of some other try write method, and you've sliced and don't care to check how long your thing is, and you're just like write this hash down if it fits, otherwise return false. Well, I mean, yeah. people could also just stack out like 128 bytes yeah, exactly. into a copy, which is four instructions. <laughs> okay. Yes, but nothing says that in the future we're not going to have some <laughs> annoying. 4096 bit hash that is way oversized. Yep, yep. Um, hopefully, we don't. <laughs> yeah. um, so right. do, you, do you want to add the API that returns void? It, would, it should return hint because there's no oh, reason yes. not to. Yep. Uh, so, so which API returns int? Uh, well, we're adding two more APIs. Now. One more. Yeah. Well, two oh, more. Two. Once we add it for get current, we should add it for the get and reset. I didn't pay attention yeah. for 20 seconds, and now, and now we're adding all these. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what just happened? That'll teach you okay. What just happened? <laughs> so uh, public int get, get current hash that takes a span. So the Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> OK, I already have it in the buffer. Never mind. OK, what do you long want? Long string pool. It. <laughs> Yeah, long size and long. String public int. <laughs> That's not an API. Keyword. Copy the try one. Yes. Move out. Move the out to the return and get rid of the word try. I see now what you're saying. And then, and then we also want one for the existing try method. Uh, so then we would have a span writing int returning get hash and reset. Have you seen the PR on Linux saying, "I'm removing a duplicate word for long long, turning long long to long." Oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Just so, in documentation. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, no. I'm just uh, I'm here to help. First PR, turn, turn, removing a duplicate word. Long, long into long. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> to be fair, long, long is strange. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it was a joke, but nonetheless. Or just ignorance. My favorite one is still the first PR to MS Build when somebody nuked all of MS Build and had it make. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny. Um, sorry, so there's an incremental hash type here which has. So the existing one you want to have is one, the get hash and reset one, or which one? Yeah, yeah. Right. So remove the out into make it return into Yeah, so that's, that's the same one. Yeah. <sighs> Especially because the values that they're writing are so small and. Uh, and now it throws an exception. Indeed, and it can it can remove a bunch of boilerplate code that I have of if try get hash or if if the try fails or doesn't return the right length, and now I'll just change it to if it doesn't return the right length. So but it'll at least. I'm curious to know what the idea. second API is that you guys were talking about. You said there are two APIs. Oh, it's it's get current yeah. and get and reset. Yeah. I see. Get and reset has a side effect. Get current does not. That's the only difference. Oh, well, we add it. We should also add overloads for um, So why are we naming this get current hash versus um, just get hash? Do you what what do you believe the state is if you call get hash? I mean there's get hash and reset. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean in fairness, I would agree with you. Like if you have these two, like it seems clear that one of them does the reset, the other one does not, so I would probably have to write my model for that. Uh, but I, I think that if you, that, that is true if you look at the fact that there are two methods. If you just see git hash when you want to git hash and reset, you'll probably call that and think it's git hash and reset. Yeah, most, most people who are familiar with cryptographic algorithms would expect git hash to be a destructive operation. Because the last thing it has to do is write, this is the total number of bytes that I gave you. And Fair enough, but why do you that. think get current hash would not have that? Uh, to me, current does not imply it's not destructive. Because at minimum, you now have to think about what does a current hash mean, yeah. and now you'll maybe look at the docs because this is a confusing problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why don't you just call it then get foo? I mean, like, that's the goal. Uh, we can. I think probably check will flag it then. So you're just well, we could, we could get rid of get current hash, hash and just have a fork routine. <laughs> Which is what solved, the, yeah. That, that it was, solves naming. That was Levi's solution to the naming problem. Was uh -huh. well, uh, yeah. Yeah. I have to say, though, given that IntelliSense does a good job grouping things, I would probably not have current. I think that would be easier, but I don't care. It's not my API. Yeah, like I just because we already have the like compute hash and, uh, and stuff on other types. I think that the which are all destructive. I think having yeah. a git hash that is not destructive is too confusing in the domain. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So now that is future. That is scope creep, my friends. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I mean, we have special musical guests in attendance, so scope creep is is something we want to treat him to. Right? Well, Tim is apologizing. Well, Tim, this is one of these rare instances where it's really not your fault. Like that is. <laughs> that hey, is more usable APIs. That's a, <laughs> yeah. that's All right. If someone wants to take responsibility for something, let's just let them. <laughs> <laughs> more power to you. Uh, all right, let's close this one before somebody brings up more crypto stuff. Okay, we looked at this one. No, we did not look at. No, this is the one that we looked at. This is for. already approved. Yeah. All right. Oh, this so we can't cool. fit into twenty-eight minutes. Cool. We cannot. What is it? Is would, you, would you like to scroll down? <laughs> Denied. I mean, scroll, scroll <laughs> to the very bottom. Scroll, <laughs> scroll to the very bottom, you know, if you if you want some time. This is why you have to go and update the original <laughs> post. <laughs> there we go. There are there are lots of APIs in here. So what I'm hearing is. We should not approve this API. No, so the what happened was uh, you originally kind of pseudo approved the API and said, well, what other methods would you want on here rather than just two upper and two lower? And I'm like, well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Let me give you the whole universe of methods that so, you might actually want to So have. are you saying it's my fault? Yes, actually. Oh, because God. you were the last person to comment. Jeez. All right. But yeah, we can't get through that. Half okay, then let's look at this secondary. 
But it seems like something we should probably bundle with the UTF-8 screen work. Right? Yeah. Well, actually, it should be separate because... Yeah, I know. No, it's separate, but it's in the same like vicinity of text thingies that popped up, right? Yes, we should... Hand-waving, but... Yeah, but other teams still want it, though, so... I see. Async parallel for each. Yeah, this would be good to add. Okay, Steve, so you you're probably the closest person on the phone. I'm not sure this was actually... I think this was marked AK ready for review before it was ready for review. <laughs> so you want to have it back to ready for uh, feeds work? Yes, please. Oh, All right. does that mean we get half an hour back? I have an API to review. This is not how this works. Uh, all right, so then let's close this one. But if you pitch fog edited it, that's oh. forgotten by span APIs. You have to click his link at the top there. This is auto reject because someone wants an API without specifying an API. Um, <laughs> hey, I see your name there, not mine. <laughs> I was waiting for the OP to go and uh, modify it. <laughs> Alright, so that does not seem unreasonable. Yeah, ba basically, we added span APIs to. Uh, a number of places, decimal was one that where uh, a number of scenarios weren't covered. We've had a few requests for it, so people are basically just asking, let me create a decimal from an existing set of bits. We already have ones that take array, and likewise allow us to return the underlying bits into a span. Um, Is there any other the, API that where we have span as a constructor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, in particular, try get bits. I think, based on other reviews, there <coughs> needs to be an out in bytes written, or bits written. One of the two. Yeah. It, uh, it, um, sorry, Asim had a comment uh, more recently to that effect as well. <coughs> yeah. Well, we would presumably had two overloads, right? A try and just to get bits. So why is it in no in span? You wouldn't return a span. Oh no, I'm not saying return a span. I'm saying, uh, you, you're saying one that throws if the span does not have the storage required. Is it? Yeah. Is, is the number of bits? It's fixed. Uh, yeah. So we we could do what we did at the, the final the previous one, one yeah. and yeah. add the add the get that returns the number that it wrote and throws if you get it too small. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. because it's always going to be exactly sixteen bytes. Yeah. Yeah. It just um, makes it more convenient when it returns an int, then you can just like add it to your yeah. offset. And, and you get the right code that looks less like Win32. Yeah. If it doesn't succeed, yeah. <laughs> yep. um, offset plus equals decimal dot get bits by spam. Yep. So hold on. So there's an existing one that turns an int array. Yep. And now we were saying we would have get bits returning an int. And try uh, get bits that returns. Why would that be aesthetic? Oh, because they want to have aesthetic. Okay. Um, and it's called D, and then you would do just span int bits. Yeah. Presumably it should be span int destination. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. And then how do people know the size? Uh, we said that it we said that it's going to be out on the try and it's going to return it on the on the get. On success it'll always be sixteen, right? Yeah, on success it will always be 16 because decimal is exactly 16 bytes. Yeah. Oh, so people just know that it's in the dock. Like that. Yeah, they, they know of it. We're saying we still want to return. Does right. size of decimal return 16? Yes. And size of decimal is legal in an unsafe or in a non unsafe context? Uh, we'll find out. The the C sharp spec and the runtime spec both say that they're like sixteen bytes. I'm well, pretty sure. I'm just like, yeah. can somebody know yeah. that? Can they write size of decimal without being in an? Uh, it looks like it works. Okay. Well, so this is span of int, not span of byte. So there's yeah, still course, some yes. loops that you need to go through. Uh, size of. Oh, so this, yeah, so this is four. Four yeah. is the number it's going to write. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it would return four since it returns in, which also might be confusing in the context of it being called bits yeah. for yeah, compatibility with the other called. API. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I was also confused by the in, but given that everything else seems to be int array based on decimal, like that, yeah. it, I mean, yeah, not great, but. Yeah. Um, so if you know, so, yeah. So it would be um, out 
elements written. Values written. Ba- values values written. written. Yeah, that's right. So, out. <laughs> out int values written. Out int. 99% sure that's the name we have. So if someone has a span that's small, too small, can't they just know that it needs to be four and resize it and call again rather than calling try get bytes? You can't resize a span. But like uh, know that they, their span is too small and do whatever. Like rather than calling try get bytes and then waiting for its result and it returns false and then doing whatever they need to do. Do that up front on the, you know well, the size. People just should just allocate a span that's at least four in long. Right. And if someone's not doing that, then they're either doing something silly on purpose. So or then why would I ever call the try get method? You you would call the try get method if you're the le- like let's say you're the last thing in an existing or in a more complicated try get method. That yeah. You're writing the stuff down. You know, a previous thing sliced you. You don't like calling the try get just lets you it it saves you the if you know number of bytes remaining is less than four return false. You're just like return try yeah. get go call. So it, it, it's really good if you're in a pipeline. Granted, I can't imagine a pipeline that would be working with span of int right. rather than span of byte. Mm-hmm. That's that's a bit mind bending. Yeah. So I mean, we like yes, we could decide this one. The try isn't worthwhile because it's yeah, weird. But generally, it's the tries tries help other tries pipeline better. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. And then the easy to call ones are easier mm-hmm. to call. <laughs> yeah, because you you I mean, don't just want to take say. you don't just want to take a span of int or a span of byte and blindly convert them back and forth because now you have to deal with it. long it's bubbling. Presumably the one that the get by bits that takes a span would have a 10 to 1 ratio in terms of number of people who call it compared to this one. Right? Like, right. Most, most people will call the get bits one, not the try get. Yeah, and yeah. does the current get bytes, or sorry, does the current decimal constructor that takes an array throw if the array is not meant for? Uh, yeah, I think so. So presumably the span would, would as well. But, I don't know why you've given me five Correct. ints, but it, that's it, not it, a requires, it requires a length of exactly four. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we this type has already built in the the knowledge that four is the right answer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And all right. Oh, but we're using equals equals since it is. Wait. So, um, <laughs> we are. Say, so can you repeat your question? When does it? When are you asking if it throws? So we're adding the the a decimal constructor that'll take a read only span. Yes. Oh, yes. So it's the, is it accepting an oversized span, in which case it should report how much it consumed, which you can't really do in a constructor, so I don't think anything about it. No. Um, uh, but if the existing array one is already throwing, if the length is not exactly four, then this one will just throw if the length is not exactly four. Yeah, yes. there. And Gwid does something similar, again, like if you pass a read-only span of byte into Gwid's constructor, it will fail if the length is anything other than 16. And I think vector is the same thing, right? You, yeah. you can have outs on constructor. We've just never done we, it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> no, can you actually? Yes. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, it's just a regular method. No, but can you in C sharp say new foo and have an out? Yeah. It's just a method call. Mm-hmm. Why do I think Well, it's that? a very special method call. <laughs> yes, but... It's a method call that calls other methods even if you don't think it does. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, that's true for any method as well, right? Most methods don't have an implicit call to base. Yep, works just fine. Well, they get CF. Yeah. Anyway, so let me actually go back here just so that the focus is in the right window. Mm. Um, God knows what that is. Eli. Really? Oh, that's fine. Um, yeah, this was a... Uh, I'd like to point out, you know, in the year 2019. So, yeah, you're slowly making formal progress. Yes. Um, this is straightforward, I guess. This is a uh, H-Tonal and old Tom H. No. Sorry, what did N2 you do? HL. Yeah, that. N2 HL. Into HL. Into HL and HDNL. Why would we not just use those methods? Uh, because they're on IP address. Why? What's so the difference between this and the system buffer? There, there's another class in the general vicinity of this that has the read and write little and those. So that so this will be on the same class, okay. and those methods very specifically say given this in, given this integer reverse the indianness. These methods say reverse the indianness 
if and only if uh, the machine is not already in the NDMS I need it to be. So it's very similar to the IP address dot in telephone, yeah. whatever API. So so this right is now. basically a shortcut for if is little Indian reverse. Basically, yeah. Else, yeah. And why, if, if you're adding these, why don't you also have two big Indian from big Indian? Uh, it's there too. It's it's listed as a an open question, but yeah. yeah. So, but I feel like this also doesn't require you to pull in system net primitives into your application. So this is this is basically just if bit converter dot is little Indian yeah. return yeah. value else return reverse Indianness. Exactly. Why Which don't is we? the POSIX methods host the network long and uh, yeah, right. network long to host? I, I feel like the existing network APIs, is big Indian. They make they they're very explicit in their naming. In like you understand what a host and a network int is. Yeah. This is a little less obvious what it does. Okay. Why would you say that? Yeah. Well, because I mean, I mean, it, it, I guess that's what it does, right? Like it says yeah. to little Indian. If you want to know what little Indian is, you have to look it up. But like it's well, but pretty explicit about what direction it's going for. Right? Yeah. But I, I think but both of these are assuming that the input is is big, big Indian. Indian. So the so value should be big Indian value. So the, the first method is really machine to little. The second method is little is really little to machine. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're so so basically on the top one, yeah. If you are already a little Indian machine, it, it does it nothing. nothing yeah. And the same yes. on the bottom one. Yes. Yes. I, I don't mind the machine one, but like it's also like this is a. You know. Twelve methods already, right? Uh, it's yeah, quite. It's twenty four yeah. methods. Does this, this really add significant value, or just the condition writing the condition yourself? Or the span APIs? It's the only value this adds is you don't have to put all of those ifs within your code base. That's really the only value but, it adds because well, you can remove yourself. When would you? Like, how often do you? When would you have an yeah. int or q int or whatever? And know that it was network Indian, and you want, or local Indian, you want to convert it to the other one. If you're working with Indianness, you're probably working with bytes, which means you you want the read or write methods. I I would use these methods from within some of the UTF-8 code, but maybe I'm a special case consumer because I'm already doing absolutely bonker stuff in there. But why would you? Where are you getting? I guess it's because you know that the UTF-8 is in a fixed Indianness data, and now you yes. want to translate it into whatever the machine. Has. It's. It's because I, I have, because cer I have certain little. cases where I'm, where I'm, blindly reading 32 bits of data, and I need to convert it. it it's coming as big Indian because UTF-8 is always big Indian. Mm -hmm. Um, and and before I perform that. arithmetic operations on it, I need to make sure that it's in machine Indian format um, so that I don't end up having Indianness issues when I eventually go to write it back out to memory. Yeah. Seems like a very specialized thing for a case that's saving one line of code. Well, another sure. example of where you might use this is if you have a memory mapped file with little structs in it that you just have pointers to. Um, Why would you call the read? Little Indian read big, big Indian methods. Uh, well, you may not be interpreting them as just byte arrays. You might have like a struct pointer into the memory mapped file. Yeah. Why would you call reverse Indian? Like so if I you did. have a, if it's a memory mapped file, presumably you agree on the Indian on both sides. Yeah. So I did. I well, did link no, to. No, like there's there's yeah. like file formats that have a yeah. specific Indianness in the file, and yeah. this would this would be useful for reading yeah. those. But you but if you're well, I guess I'm not clear on that because if you're actually talking about a bootable struct, mm -hmm. you're going to read the whole struct, right? Yep. They're going to have the struct as a local, and then your line presumably been, you know, uh, struct dot field equals binary primitives dot two little end in the struct dot field. Is that what you're imagining this would be? Uh, no, I'm thinking more like you're you're not like. <clears throat> You're not copying into a struct. You have a pointer to some read-only memory. Sort I feel in that case so. you're better off if you're already, especially if you're already working with pointers, creating a byte span over that pointer and just using the read and write Indian methods. Yeah. Be, be, because it when you when you're using pointers, you're expecting to be able to address into that memory as normal. Mm -hmm. In which case you would. 
you would expect it to already be in the correct Indianist most of the time. Versus the other case is you're, you're serializing or deserializing data, which includes reading file formats, in which case you have a byte array that you want to convert into structured data, in which case you'd have your serialize or deserialize method having if is little endian, then do the reverse. So a specific needed. example of where this is actually pretty common is with uh, games that they just want to have all the data in a structure that they can read um, on disk without having to do but they special read, serialization. But they would read the structure. Yeah. Right. So they're not reading. These don't apply to a structure. This would apply to this would apply to a member of the structure. Yeah. Yes. Or so they would read the structure. They'd blit it out. And then they would do, you're saying they would do the, that's what I was asking earlier, like struct.field equals two little and the end struct.field? I, well, no. In, in a game setting, you would probably have the file in read only memory. <coughs> so um, you wouldn't just set, you, you would have a pointer to the data that's already in memory. You wouldn't make a copy and be able to write to it. You're going to have a boost tower, not a. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so then you're imagining it would be. Two little Indian boo arrow field. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to me, this seems so specialized right. that like the one extra condition you have to write to say is yeah. a little because because I like while I while I think that there's probably value in H to NL and into HL uh, in the you know the pod defined thing, um, like the fact that these say to and from sounds like it's always converting something, exactly, and so yeah. we would need to say that it's. You know uh, that it's post to little network <laughs> network to network to little Indian like sure. so uh, so we it sounds like we don't have a good scenario for making these APIs I think the problem public. is that the names are just really hard unless we just literally name them H to NL well and, and in general like <laughs> if we're gonna add like the the value for me the value of a method is inversely proportional to the amount of code you'd have to write to mm -hmm. Yeah. or whatever to replace it. Yeah. If, if something is going to be a one-liner, it's got to have a huge amount of value. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine the JIT would end up, if, if you're using these methods and you're having to inline them all, then the JIT's going to have to align every branch, and it's not perfect at aligning branches right now, so it, it's likely to hurt both more than oh. just writing that if statement. So, well, so anyway. let's reject it for now until we have a scenario where it would actually yeah. be really handy. I think the JIT would actually do well with this one, or anybody writing it themselves, because yeah. I believe it understands that the binary primitives is little Indian is yeah. constant can be uh, that code folded. But it, it, yes. it, it does, but there's some cases where inlining or double inlining still introduces temp locals that aren't removed. No, I isn't. I think like when we actually build system private core lib, I think the if just goes away entirely in the IL. Because no, when it's we, a static read only. Really. Yeah, it's a static read only that's forward. conditioned based off of whether we're building for mono or us. Okay. That seems like something that could be improved in our <coughs> well, process. I mean, sure. But we can't call it a const because then you would compile it against yeah, the yeah, core yeah. and you pick right, the right. <laughs> which is why it's a static read only yeah. that the JIT then elides. Yeah. Okay. Also, I, I think if we were to have them in the future host to little Indian and little Indian to host might be better names. And I think okay. someone else mentioned that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, let's uh let's reject it for now then. Yeah. And if there's a burning desire for it in the future we'll bring it back. Because I think what had happened, like I'm I'm looking through the history on this, what had happened is I introduced a bunch of these internally. For the UTF-8 logic, and in code review, actually it was you that mentioned like, "Hey, do we should we consider making this public?" And now we consider it, and the answer is no. I even commented after this, and I have no clue what I said. And someone just <laughs> while we were talking about this, someone just thumbs up the uh, <laughs> proposal. All right. So, what's the conclusion? Uh, no, reject. Okay. At least until we've got a more concrete yeah. scenario. Yeah. Easy. Okay, let me. And then we need much more complicated words. Yeah. Fine by me. Oh, Please. I just said that we should also have to and from big Indian. Yes. 
Because, yeah. like, the Cori scenario, we don't want host to Little Indian, we want network to Little Indian. Yeah. If it's mm -hmm. defined to be a network byte order. There was one of the things that. Host is who you are. So, yeah. one, one of the things that I'll do Little Indian to Little Indian. Is I'll open up a separate <laughs> proposal because one of the comments that kept coming up in here is because there are so few overloads of. Uh, Host to network order and network to host order on IP address. Some people keep calling the wrong overloads because they're passing in uint and it gets auto converted to a long, for instance. Um, I'll open up a separate issue to say we should add the overloads there because they're probably, well, there undoubtedly is value for that. So, in that case, why not just keep the TCP as unbinding primitives? Because people are already used to calling them on IP address because they already have the right names. And everything else. Now that in the future, if you add on both places, now you're basically duplicate. Yep. That's also potentially a breaking change to add the overloads. It's true. Because people are calling it with uint, it's getting upcasted to, to long. Yes. And there's going to be at least one person who meant to do that. <laughs> no, that person did not mean to do that. <laughs> Right. And if they meant to do it, then they can recompile their code. Okay. Um, All right. Corey or Steve. Yeah. This, uh, should now be the whole thing. Yeah, I think this makes sense to me. Well, they can't be default because they're overloads to the ones that are already there, right? Can we just default the current ones? Uh, or, or no, there, there are no the, current ones. The exact match that didn't need the default would still be preferred. So it's just a question of who we... There's no benefit to making these two. Yeah, you right? can never call it with the default. Yeah, yeah. Other than if you copy and paste it. Just the signature of that one method, it doesn't look like we ignored the guidance to have it as default. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. The guidance is the, the guidance presumes you're starting from scratch. Right. So, so someone who has copy and pasted signatures and been like, okay, I can't use this one in the book because it doesn't it only follows it via overload resolution. My only question is Corey, you didn't you have a proposal or something that was doing something in this space with the other parameters as well? Um I had a proposal that You're doing something with specifying like the how to connect for the happy eyeballs yeah. change. Was that these same methods? Mm, no. That wasn't connect async. Oh, it, it was connect async, but uh, that one I believe was using the event args overload and not introducing new easy mode ones. I see. So why only for connect, not for receive? No, there's accept. We already have receive and send yeah. and take cancellation token. Do this they return oh, value task? Do value task go through? Oh, I see. Okay. So it would make sense then for these to return value task as well? I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, cert, accept makes sense. Connect and then I connect, see. like, I mean, the. I think it makes sense. Um, it doesn't add a ton of value for it to be value task, but it also would be very rare, I think, for someone to like do anything other than await it directly. Mm -hmm. It would be, but is the operation almost always going to finish asynchronously? Uh, it's almost always going to finish. Well, it's very frequently going to finish. Well, it depends. It's usually going to be async, but uh, we cache state behind the scenes, so this would very easily allow us to avoid an allocation for that task? would be the reason to use this. Just for straight up task on task of T. Now the only the only way we'd be able to avoid the allocation here is if we um, did some kind of pooling. Yeah. If we cache the async of ours. Yeah. I guess I was I was wondering I and I, I know you've talked about this before, but I thought I thought you had mentioned previously that for methods that return asynchronously, value task of like properly asynchronously most of the time, value task of t made sense because you could reuse the state object that backs the t, but value task by itself 
does not make sense because inevitably it's going to be turned into a regular task. In the so end. The, it's a little bit more complicated, than okay. that, unfortunately. Um, there's the question of synchronous completion and there's the question of asynchronous completion. Right. For synchronous completion, uh, value task of T frequently makes sense because it allows you to avoid allocating a, a task for something that wouldn't require it. For synchronous completion, value task has no benefit over task and just returning a task not completed. Because you could return the singleton. Because you could return the singleton. Okay. For asynchronous completion, um, if you do the simple thing, neither value task nor value task of T has benefit because you're going to allocate the task that backs them mm -hmm. each time. However, we added the ability for a value task to not just wrap uh, a T and the task of T, but also an I value task source of T, which allows you to pool the backing store for either the value task of T or the value task. So, oh, for the resettable task then? Yeah. Okay. So, in that scenario, if you are able to pool, mm -hmm. there may be potential benefits for the value task of T or even value task. Okay. For example, we uh, on network stream, you know, we have a write async method that returns value task, not value task of T. And the way it's implemented, uh, we will always be able to return a value task that wraps the same object over and over and over. So regardless okay. of whether it completes synchronously or not, it will be non-allocating. Mm -hmm. For this connect method, in theory, I could imagine us doing some kind of pooling based on this, a socket async event args on either covers, where if we had a couple socket async event args in a pool, we check one out, we use that as the backing store for this value task, okay. and then we return it to the pool. So the fact that we might be able to take advantage of it Plus, um, that I don't think that I think the common usage would be to just await it. Sure, it makes me feel like it's an okay thing to do. Okay, but it's, it's sort of in that gray area. So we said receive async already has overloads to take installation token, but what about receive from async and receive message from async? There's a separate proposal for the UDP related ones. I, I think we reviewed that already. Yeah, I think it's a open something. So then we are okay with the one at the top, right? That's the conclusion. Uh, yeah. And maybe we should, should we postpone this until next time? Yeah, maybe we should do that if we want to. But I mean, it, it sounds yeah. like, it sounds like this will probably go through next time though. Yeah. Maybe with some. Yeah, we just haven't gotten to the rest yeah, of the okay. How about this? Our marks is blocked because then it pops up as the top of my list. Sure. And then we just continue this next time. All right. How large is the back end, by the way? It's about, I want to say 50 items total. Mm -hmm. 50, five, zero? Yeah. Yeah, 50. So now, is that, is 30 on multiple five? Is it going down or up? It's generally going about stable. So I think we, like, sometimes we, I think all in all it's going down. The tendency is down, but it's it's very slowly because we approve 10, five more pop in, right? And so, like, it's a, and not all of them are equal. Like yeah. some of mine, which are the ones that keep getting pushed off because they're at the top of the list, uh, are really chunky ones. Yeah. Like what is good list. though is that we are now basically in the territory where we're no longer two years, three years, right? So all the ones that are older than multiple years, we are now. That was my question: yeah. Is it worth if, if we're stable in terms of the incoming and outgoing? Would it be worth having a push to go through the the fifty so that we're yeah. sort of always up to date? I think it would be good to just finish the, the small ones, but yeah, might be good. It feels like we're trending down. Like we trend up in November and December when we don't have the meat at all. So more people. Yeah. Hmm? More people. Right. right. <laughs> so we don't have the meeting. I <laughs> one's here, and and it turns out a lot of people uh, propose APIs. All right. Bye bye, folks working. online. <laughs> or because they get a.